Daniel Fuller. Uh, I am the curator at Atlanta Contemporary, and I have the distinct privilege of sitting here today with Larry Walker. Over 50 years, Larry has been everything. He's been this incredible artist. He's been a teacher. He's been a mentor. He's been a board member. He's, he's helped spaces throughout Atlanta, and he's really helped put the Atlanta art scene on the map. Uh, we have the incredible privilege uh, of giving Larry this year, of awarding uh, Larry the, the Nexus Award, uh, which is well-deserved. I can, I can think of literally no one as deserving as Larry to, to receive this award, and I'm very proud to be involved uh, with the museum mm. in the time that Larry's receiving this award. Um, and we're just going to ask a, a couple quick questions, just just sort of a, a get to know you a little bit. Um, okay. So, Larry, you were you were born in Georgia, but you grew up in New York. Yeah. Can you can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in art? Huh. You know, that's going to take six hours. Six hours. <laughs> Two. I was born in Georgia in Franklin. Uh, my father died when I was six months old, so I never actually knew him. I'm the youngest of eleven. And uh, uh, after my father died and the, the depression came along, um, things got tough. So we, we went from owning land to sharecropping. And uh, then the house burned down. Then we moved to LaGrange to live with my oldest brother who was married and my oldest brother's old enough to be my dad. Um, he was married, and we, we lived with him for a little bit until we could find, find a place. And we did that, and then eventually, when I was six years old, we moved to New York. Um, and I think the art thing started probably in New York, although probably a little bit before that. The, the curiosity thing, the imagination was there. But in New York, the imagination was, was greater. Mm. And seeing those tall buildings going all the way to the heavens. They were really six-story tenement houses in, in, in Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that was an amazing thing. And uh, I stayed in the house a lot because there was a lot of gang activity going on and my mother didn't want to stop doing things, getting in trouble. Stayed in the house after school and I would draw. Mm -hmm. I would draw what, was, what I could see out the window, including looking out the back window and seeing close lines going from one building to the next. And it was always an enjoyable thing. Another thing. Uh, in elementary school, the teacher would ask you to do something on the board, some kind of drawing, after she discovered that somebody could draw a little bit. And uh, then in high school, uh, excuse me, junior high school, um, was the first art teacher I had, Miss Evans. She was a short little lady who Ruled her art room with an iron fist. She was a tough lady, <laughs> but she uh, she zeroed in on. And now remind you now, this junior high school was all boys, and all the boys came from the same general area. And that there was a gang in almost every block. You brought you brought a whole bunch of gangs together in this one school. Yeah. So this little lady would. Uh, she she had her rules and she enforced everything and she she was able to zero in on four students from that class from her class and send us off to the high school of music and art to take the entrance exam. So we we all went up to high school of music and art which set up on the hill in the middle of a park. We we all knew we were going to get beat up because we were going out of our area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that didn't happen but uh, that that experience of going to high school of music and art changed my life. Mm. It, uh, it, it, it wedded together the notion of what an art, artist was and what an artist should do and the kinds of things that one needed to learn. Did you, did you have a, a mentor during that time? Was there, was there anyone at the school or anyone nah. in the neighborhood? At, at the yeah, high well, school? Well, there was, there was uh, in terms of a mentor, you don't think of mentors the same way you think of mentors now. Yeah. But there were a couple of experiences that took place earlier on. Uh, one, there was an artist who had a studio in a storefront down the street from where I lived. And I used to walk by and look in the window and watch him paint. 
So one day he invited me in and talked to me about art and in fact and wanted to know if I liked drawing and what I did and so forth. So he says, if you want to, you can come on down here in your spare time and, and uh, do a little artwork. So I had my sister come with me. Well, my mother had my sister go down there with me to check him out to make sure he was okay and see if it was okay for me to be there. Yeah. And it was all, it was fine. So I remember on at least three or four occasions I went down and I would sit in a little space and do some drawing while he did his thing. And I, to this day I have not figured out who he was. <laughs> I have not been able to track back and say, who is this artist? And anyway, that was, that was an experience that was helpful. And the other thing was the, uh, the art teacher at junior high school. Um, anyway, in, in, high, in high school, there were a number of, of experiences that were important. One of them was uh, with Lee Rosen. Lee, Lee Rosen was uh, the teacher who, that I had for uh, design class. And the first day of the design class, she said to the whole class, and says, now, boys, girls, don't plan on making some nice little thing take home to your parents at the end of this, this session. Because all we're going to do is, we're going to do some work. We're going to learn something about design. So the materials you need are a pack of black construction paper, a pair of scissors, a box of straight pins, a piece of cardboard, such and such size. So we would go in and first day we would cut strips of paper, thin strips, long strips, short strips, wide strips, etc. And she would then give us an assignment, an assignment with things like, uh, all right, now I want you to take your pieces of paper you know, and create harmony. Just pin, get the, once you have the shaped up like harmony, pin it down and we'll talk about it. We pin it down and put them up on the wall have a critique. Which thing had harmony? The next day it was, okay, now I want conflict. Hmm. Opposition the next day. Yeah. You know. Day after day after day there was some word that she'd come up with that we would have to generate visually That's a great in, with project. these lines. Yeah. And no color, just black lines on this paper in this space. And what I learned was had to do with that flat piece of paper, that piece of cardboard, was no longer flat. It had dimension. And you could move in and out of that space. You could go across that space, up and down, and in and out. It was wonderful. Um, great experience. Mm -hmm. And that experience stayed with me for years. And I incorporated, I made some variations on that, and I used part of it in my teaching over the years. Anyway, that, those are some of the things that took place. There were a bunch more. But that would take us, like I said, six hours. <laughs> six hours. <laughs> <laughs> so you had been teaching in, in Stockton, California, and then uh, you moved here to Atlanta specifically to run the art department at Georgia State. Can you talk about, you had this long, amazing career as, a, as an art professor. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that influenced your artistic practice, how uh, working with, with young students for all of the all of that time, how that sort of uh, how or or if it sort of influenced you? No, I'm sure it did. But um, years years before, I made this conscious effort to to pursue the teaching of art in addition to doing my own work, and I figured that um, that, that 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 was. That was where I needed to be, because it, I could teach and do things related to people uh, without it, that affecting what I did in my, with my own work. So years ago, I had given up such things as uh, anything commercial art and architecture and all those kinds of things, because the client was important. Mm -hmm. It's important to respond to what the client need, needed. But... Uh, in teaching, you didn't have to respond to them <laughs> in order to do your work. I mean, incidentally, my my first six years of teaching was in Detroit public school system, mm -hmm. and I've taught every grade level except kindergarten. 
And um, what's your favorite level to no, no, uh, no, teach? No, no, graduate school. Graduate <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, I guess the, the thing that was most important in my college teaching, both at the University of the Pacific and at Georgia State University, had to do with the um, seeing how people could take ideas and generate their own ideas and come up with something and how as a outside person I could help them by influencing them to look at this or think about that and so forth. And I started incorporating some of those ideas with my own work. And um, it's, been, it's been an interesting experience over the years. Hmm. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> With, with your work, we sort of see, we're here in Larry's studio, we see uh, a number of works through the years. It's, it's mostly recent work, but, but there are some older pieces. And, you know, looking, looking just over here, we see a piece, it's a, it's a figure, and it's in this sort of abstract island. Uh, these figures, you know, sometimes it feels like palm trees. It feels like, it feels like uh, something very tropical or in this in this sort of um, beautiful setting but then we when we move to uh, more recent work we have the sort of urban blight of the uh, the brick wall the graffiti yeah. the uh, the uh, ads and the flyers up everywhere can you talk about that shift from this sort of uh, almost a paradise whether it be uh, a flawed paradise or not, uh, but from this yeah. from this sort of tropical setting to you into the city. Yeah. It's interesting that you pick up the tropical setting because um, that influence, if any, I mean, if it's there at all, it came from California. The um, when I arrived in California, the openness, the, the f just seeing a plane that went on forever. I've never seen so much sky at one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, artists in that in the area where I was were they were they were pretty much into landscapes and I kind of fell into the landscape thing and I was doing these landscapes that had large vistas and so forth. And uh, along with that, or along somewhere along the way, I was dri driving someplace and I was looking in the rear view mirror side view mirror, and I, whatever I had seen, whatever I had seen going this way, mm -hmm. I could now see in reverse going in the, in the mirror. So I started a series called Microscape. There were little circular pieces, landscape oriented, where the, 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 land, the imagery um, lines, etc., would extend beyond the, the circumference. So there was, a, there was a focus on this interior, exterior. Mm -hmm. right? Looking forward, looking yeah. back. And, um, and they got a little bit more and more abstracted. Some were recognizable with trees and you know, palm tree type things and so forth. But um, the other thing that's, that took place there too was there was a series back in this late 60s that was doing called Children of Society. The Children's Society series had to do with a flock of people meshed together, pushing, um, pushing forward, pushing back, whichever, you know. But this business of pulling and pushing was, was there. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon those two, those two series united. They merged. Yeah. And the circular thing and the people became one thing and a competition bar came across the top of it which said that people couldn't get past this competition barrier. And that barrier ultimately bent as people generated enough energy to make it bend. Mm -hmm. And eventually the barrier disappeared and was replaced by a cloud form. So the people were there pushing up against this cloud form, <laughs> but they were still rooted to the earth. Yeah. yeah. And the people were, they were, they're not that realistic. They were abstracted imagery of, images of people. Um, and pretty soon it got down to one person out there in space. And as you looked at the one person long enough, you discovered that there's another, kind of another person inside that person. This again, this interior exterior was there. 
And the interior exterior thing stayed around for quite a while and pretty soon again driving down the highway and looking behind a, behind a big semi truck you get close enough to the truck and it fills your whole vision and becomes a frontal barrier hmm. another barricade another okay but you know that there's space inside the truck and you can walk around to the other side of the truck yet on the on the surface there's an opportunity for people to do things they put the name of the truck on there, they put numbers on it and so forth. And then other people come along and they scribble on it. Wash me, I'm a dirty truck. <laughs> you know, things like that. And pretty soon uh, after that series, it was a, a gradual transition into um, the wall series, which with the graffiti marks and the, and, uh, the bricks and so forth, like, like in here, the posters and that kind of thing. And... Again, the wall becomes a barrier, a frontal barrier. Yet you know you can go beyond that space, so there's a tendency to move in and beyond that. So as you look at this, there are images that start to emerge from the piece itself. If you look at um, right there, for example, there's a head mm -hmm. that's starting to come forth. There's another head up there at the top with the, yep. with the thing around his ear. There's one ear, mouth, nose. And I call these things wall spirits. There's a little here. So there's interior, exterior, frontal space, frontal barriers that are not really barriers. They just appear that way for a minute. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but this business of interior, exterior was is probably the thing that's been most constant in, in the work. Well, it's interesting. Although the series of change. It's interesting. The, the idea of getting beyond the, you know, Getting beyond the the surface of the earth, getting past the trees, and then the, yeah. you know, and there's sort of like barrier after barrier after yeah, yeah, barrier, yeah. and sort of that one person that's sort of ascending. Are are the darker spaces in the walls? Are they holes, or are they? Is the the wall, the wall? Is the the wall the the ultimate barrier? Barrier. The wall itself is the ultimate barrier. The, the fact that they're dark spaces and light spaces is not. That's not related specifically to, okay. the, to the openness of a closeness. It's of not the a space. crack that could be snuck right. through. No, no, no. No, okay. No. All right, now I've got the, uh, the, the ultimate puff oh. question. Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> who, are, who are your favorite artists? Who's, who's a favorite artist? I, I don't have one favorite artist. I have, there are a lot of artists yeah. that have played a role over the years that, I was, that I've responded to. Uh, Richard Diebenkorn, I paid attention to. Wayne Tebow, I paid attention to. Charles White, I paid attention to. Um, I mean, it, it's just, there's just a bunch of artists over the years that have done wonderful things that, have, that I've picked up on or responded to. Katie Collowitz, I love her stuff, you know. Um, Eva Hess. Across the board. So yeah, it's across the board with age, age, age gender, race, gender, way that the way that they make work, yeah. the media, yeah, yeah. All, everything. Yeah. yeah. Really, really appreciate Larry taking the time, and um, we cannot say enough how much you should come to our party on August twenty seventh uh, to chair Larry on and to. Uh, raise a glass in his honor and clap as hard as you can for someone who <laughs> deserves uh, an award so incredibly yeah. much. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, let, let me say I appreciate you. I appreciate the contemporary offering this award and for presenting it to me. And I'll do my best to <laughs> live up to the standards of <laughs> contemporary award. Thank you, Larry. Sure. Appreciate it. All right.